from a plant perspective, I mean, I know obviously we, but we all know cannabis very well. I mean, you saw yeah. indoor, you saw outdoor, you saw problems scaling. I'm assuming this is a much more easy uh, cultivation process when it comes to the plant. And is it, is it outdoor? Is it indoor? Like, what does that look like? Hey, everyone. Welcome to our latest Trade Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. And today we're talking coca leaves. Yes, coca leaves. And yes, it is legal and it's a business that's brand new, but it's about to explode, including a new supply agreement announced for this Canadian company with the country of Colombia. And what is it and who is it? Well, let's welcome in a familiar face to the cannabis investor crowd that's now switched to this industry. Pat McCutcheon, he's the CEO of Power Leaves. Good to see you, sir. How's it going, Chad? How you doing? I am good. Anthony Verrill, good to see you. How are things? I'm good. I'm, I'm excited to jump into this. I've known Pat a long time in the cannabis space. This sounds I know. like a pretty damn exciting opportunity, and uh, I've got a lot of questions. As it relates to the business and, and, just uh, like and everyone the industry. Else does. I'm sure yeah. everyone. So before we get into business, uh, I think to Anthony's point, Pat, uh, what would you say if somebody pulls you aside and says, okay, what is this industry and how does it work to like really understand what it is? It's, this is the most unique and differentiated industry that we've seen in many years. Uh, we're really breaking the, the breaking new ground and bringing the coca leaf to the, the public consumers in the U.S. internationally. And we're going after breaking one of the age-old and strongest brand monopolies in the world with what Coca-Cola has done in the world. Interesting. So how is this, I guess, a couple things. Like, what's the biggest misconceptions about the industry and how is this legal? Yeah, biggest misconception is, and, and by far, the, the very negative stigma around coca leaves uh, and what actually, that the only thing that this plant is used for is this terrible drug that has changed the world. Uh, in fact, this, this plant is incredible. It is a perennial. Uh, it, it produces so many more leaves relative to what cannabis does in terms of production. Uh, and it has an incredible ability to sweeten drinks with the same performance and drop sugar uh, it has an appetite suppression element to it and a number of other things that are really going to surprise the consumer world outside of what they understand to be just a cola based drink. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, so, so as it relates to products, I mean, as an input product, are you looking at it more as like an additive to improve current products or coming out with actual like ground up finished um, CPGs that are leveraging the extracts? Yeah, we're looking at both. So we are we're looking to work with numerous brands that already have high performing brands that then we can can come on as an additional skew. Brands that already have brand adhesion, brands that people know well, and now you've got a Coca brand new Coca flavor taste, and obviously one of the most unique narratives and stories in the world. Yeah. Kind of coverage. Uh, okay. But we're also looking at ground up opportunities. Uh, now I'll make it pretty clear. Uh, Power Leaves Corp focuses on. Uh, a manufactured uh, major wholesale volume supply of our, our ingredient products. We have our two formulated products, one of our, our base extract, which is a natural, almost you can call it crude if you want to make a comparison to cannabis, but a full spectrum, delicious extract base, based, non-alcoholic. And then we have an alcohol-based product, which, which is 80% plus ethanol. And it's a, it's a fantastic base for vodka, gin, spirits, mixed sodas, so it's wow. a wide array of products. So I'm assuming the addressable market for this is pretty big. I mean, are you yeah. looking at this more so as like you see a current like like let's say like a line of Red Bull in the future with like it's like you would see with like green coffee like includes uh, coca extract um, as like an elevated version of the product. Yeah, you nailed it. So obviously, okay. I don't like to throw down brand names per se. Yeah, like yeah. You mentioned, but yeah. Uh, you look at a very healthy. Uh, health and wellness targeted energy right. drink is our perfect okay. base. That's where we're starting. I think it's what the world expects to come from this plant and from this, this product. It, it has a wonderful energy boost. And again, it tastes great. Uh, we think that if we, if we add this ingredient to a number of other products that people know well already, we think we're going to have yeah. really fast brand adhesion off the shelf and we'll sell volumes. This is all about okay. volume, food and beverage market, a lower level of regulatory and a, a not, not nearly as difficult a time to break into the markets as cannabis. And the market is unbelievably oh, that's interesting. internationally. Yeah. Wow. What's been the consensus, I guess, without naming companies and brands, but what has been, I guess, the feedback uh, about the interest level from a lot of big brands that you've spoken with recently? 
Yeah, guys, since we've started our, our crowdfunding over the last couple of months and yeah. our marketing's really ramped up with working with a number of different players in the, in the field, top level players, the, the interest has been incredible. It is really easy for us to get a meeting. Uh, we're going through diligence with a number of major, medium and smaller companies now. Uh, we think that the world knows this plant. The world yeah. knows yeah. this product when we were first pitching, I was asked all the time, like, Pat, do you think there's a, there's, do you think there's an industry or there's a market for this? And I just simply ask, like, how many times have you tasted this product before? Yeah. And surprisingly, when you taste it, when you taste our, our extract base, yeah. uh, you notice the sense, you sense and notice it right away, but you sense a number of other flavors and, and different perspectives. So our BD list and our commercialization partners are, let's just say we've got over 40 groups engaged right now at different stages. Wow. So yeah. how big could this industry, like what's the growth trajectory for the overall industry? It's just that it, it, Chad, it's an industry, right? We're the first player to break the mold, to go into the, the indigenous territory, to work closely with the Colombian government, to get this done, to trailblaze over the last two years, which has been yeah. an incredible story. Uh, but this, there, this, the industry is, is basically unlimited. I, we think that, yeah. uh, it's truly an industry. We're the first player. We know there's going to be other players to come in the space. So walk me through like how this supply agreement structured with Columbia and bringing this in, obviously, into the country of Canada. Yeah, so we've got we've got two supply agreements that we've signed now, uh, one smaller one in the U.S. and then a significant one in the in Canada for our extract product, for our first product. Uh, we've actually signed pretty significant uh, minimum uh, take or pay volumes which is fantastic for our forecast. I think it really checks the box for PLC to say, we've not only got a product, we've executed our supply chain, and now we've in fact signed deals that, that are gonna nail out over 50% of our forecasts uh, for the next year on our extract side of, the, of, the, of our business, one of our mm -hmm. three product uh, portfolios. That's huge. From a, from, from, a, from a plant perspective, I mean, I know obviously we, we all know cannabis very well. I mean, you saw yeah. indoor, you saw outdoor, you saw problems scaling. I'm assuming this is a much more easy uh, cultivation process when it comes to the plant. And is it, is it outdoor? Is it indoor? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, good point. You know, Anthony, you know, I love getting asked this question, right? <laughs> <laughs> For the last eight years, if you cut me, I bleed cannabis. Not, not yep. literally, but you cut me. I loved everything about the plant. I still do. But today, working with this, I've seen a, a whole different perspective on what the opportunities are for health and wellness and different products that can come from a plant. Coca is a perennial plant. It lives between 70 to 100 years old. It gets harvested three to four times a year. You can do well over a ton of leaf per hectare per harvest. You okay. can imagine how much this actually turns into volume <clears throat> and yeah. how low a turnover it is. And one really unique thing about this is that... Uh, uh, this the supply chain and the actual cost of coca leaves is been stable for many years now. So is it analogous to cannabis too, or it's completely different? You can't um, ask me like the leading extraction guys in the world if this is extraction. Man. Yeah. yeah, we we do a full. Uh, it's a much more simple volume scalable extraction. And okay. yes, we do, it, we do it in our mountain labs. So we do ethanol and purified water, and then we actually. We, we take all of the waste streams from our extraction and we use those actually as products either to uh, put back into our fertilizer as a waste product to add up to our fertilizer mass or more importantly, more interesting, all of the ethanol that comes off as waste from the extraction itself is our essence product. So our okay. essence product is like off the shelf out of the just out of distillation is this beautiful tasting raspberry rhubarb <clears throat> ethanol base for vodka and, and gins. So it's in create it's a it's quite a simple but incredible extraction process. The decoconization process is what we're trademarking. That's where there's a lot of se or, yeah. uh, protecting. There's secrets there. That's where the really interesting piece comes. And we actually proved that almost two years ago in, in Amsterdam before we did this project. Huh. So what I'm gathering is this this almost sounds like a very more lucrative industry to be in an opportunity with what you're doing now versus your days at Medifarm. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, I, you guys, I think I, I've got a master's of cannabis and capital markets and I'm going for a PhD of Coca, yeah. international world food yeah. beverage. It's not a regulated product. Coca-Cola has over the last hundred plus years has sent their products to over 220 countries around the world. Yeah, We're, we're really trying to go out of business where we don't replicate the wheel. 
We can yeah. move this product all over the world. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there's been no challenges in executing on our supply chain uh, and getting approvals uh, from the different uh, factions of government, security, export agencies, whatnot. Uh, it's taken a lot of work with a lot of professionals and proving that we're we're taking a product is basically the same as what Coca Cola has been doing for so many years. Yeah. Uh, and now we've perfected a way to get out the, get get this out, and we've got a legal supply chain. So. The world is our oyster because it's not regulated and it can go in a plethora of products without being, without having to go through uh, controlled narcotic status, similar to the other products we talk about. So do you see, do ahead. you see regulation coming as this gets more popular or do you think it's kind of going to be the status quo? It's an efficient market now and there's really no reason um, for regulators to come in. The, the product, the, so our, we are a wholesale ingredient product manufacturer Coca is recognized as a grass product in the U.S. already. Okay. Is already listed as uh, as, a, as a coca ex- decoconized coca extract is a grass uh, certified product, categorized. And so, since we have that precedent, and yeah. since the world basically follows with nuances, don't get me wrong, the world follows that grass status. No, I don't see any change in regulatory, and I see this uh, being open. The value proposition of the company and the unique element that we have done, uh, that we've executed on, is our relationship with the Indigenous, working with the government so closely, building out these Jurassic Park-looking labs in the mountains, and then executing on this with a a wonderful partner with our Indigenous. And I can go through the, the legal perspective of that if you guys want, but that's the key elements. I, I do not see anyone else coming into Colombia and doing what we've just done over the last two years. It's uh, a, a, a lot of work. work. Yeah. So a lot of work, time and effort over two years. So describe to me just the overall competitive landscape. Like how um, would you say is like uh, your first mover advantage, so to speak? And you see a lot more players entering this space. But like you said, this has been a two year journey piecing this together. So how much of an early advantage do you have? Yeah, well, it's been a, it's been a two year journey since I since I started. I'm actually not the founder. I'm number two in, so I'm a co-founder of the company. All right. Uh, the company's architecture and the work that has been done with the relationships with the indigenous was almost seven years before that. Wow. Okay. There's been a lot of there's this is the tip of the iceberg, guys. Uh, we've got a very significant competitive moat around the business. Uh, One of the major driving Mm -hmm. factors, obviously, the Indigenous Partnership, which is a 15-year exclusive deal with the strongest and most um, advanced Indigenous group in Colombia, but also our relationships with the government. Uh, They're very excited to see us help the Indigenous and give a new economic sustainable opportunity for them. And so that's that's the key. I'm giving it I'm giving it two to three years before anyone can get even close to where we are. I believe there may be other capital markets or public market plays we might see but no one's going to be able to execute on what we've done i've been in the field i've got the battle scars for it i've, I've done this from the ground up huh. interesting this is interesting story to say the least that's for sure <laughs> like you don't come across it's, it say, yeah what's the uh i guess excited about it, guys you can tell yeah, I could see that. Um, so what can investors learn more about the company? Like, are we looking to go public? If so, like what exchange are we looking at? If you could maybe go into detail with those sorts of things. Yeah, we're uh, we're being quite bold on this one. Uh, we're absolutely looking to go public 100%. Uh, we're very close to having audited financials done. Two years audited financials done with a great Canadian firm, which is a big is a great success for us. It really proves that we've architected this correctly and done this the right way from the bottom up. Uh, we, we, we are very strong and focused and we've communicated directly now in our last webinar that we're doing a direct listing onto the NASDAQ where we've communicated to wow. uh, yeah, shareholders and investors that it's going to be done in the first half of next year. And we've just signed a bank to actually, to bring us there and, 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 and bring us through the journey. So we know we're going and, uh, all systems go internally for governance and preparing the team for the next steps. It's like cannabis. It's like making the wrong turn down the right road. You learn all these <laughs> things in cannabis and now you're in this, this literally, right? I yeah, love the, that analogy. Yeah. I love that. The, I'm going to use the, that. <laughs> the, 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 this literally sounds like it's all key learnings from cannabis. And this is just like way, I don't want to call it easier because I'm assuming it's not easier by any means. Um, but like the, the the headwinds aren't there. Like this just yeah. seems like it's, it's streamlined for you already. Granted, it's two years in, but it's like everything I'm hearing 
has been like a check mark and a headwind in cannabis. It's like it's not present here. Um, which I mean, what's like so what's next for the company? Um, obviously you have a listing potentially in this first half of next year, but from a corporate perspective, like where does the company go from here? Yeah, well, we're we're expecting to close this uh this first tranche of our reg D financing crowdfunding uh this Friday. So that's really okay. exciting. Uh, we're expecting to do quite well from that and bring down a significant portion of, to add to our cash flow. Next steps, 100% are relatively small. And this is where it's very different in cannabis too. Relatively small capital investment to give us a 30 to 40 X scale, uh, scalability with our volume production. We're bringing in in-house testing chromatography into the mountains. Our team is ready now to okay. bring this on to really speed up our process efficiencies and nail down the exact quality and the formulations of our product. Uh, and additional staffing really just to bring in uh, the increased leaf. And that is with our indigenous partners. The, the situation is that with, and I'll go a little bit further on this and I'll stop guys, but uh, the Colombian decree gives the indigenous the ability to cultivate, touch and transform. That's how this system works. We have an association, a non-for-profit association, Nasawala. They, they're the only ones that are able to touch, cultivate, touch and transform. We then work hand in hand in our labs together. We extract together and not until it's decoconized and all of the alkaloids are destroyed indiscriminately. Can we actually then take that product out and then move it through the supply chain to sell to a consumer? So uh, scale up, execute on numerous uh, major contracts in the U S and Canada and get products on the shelf as fast as possible. Wow. And I'm assuming the D I'm assuming the decoconization if I'm saying that if I might've butchered that, but it's I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that process takes out the active ingredients that can turn that concentrate into the street drug um, form. There you go. And obviously this okay. gets asked all the time. This yeah. is a really important factor. I want to make sure I, I, I always, I don't even come close to walking to this close to this line. Actually, in fact, Paralyze Corp is a food and beverage and fertilizer company. Uh, we're not in the pharmaceutical space. We're not currently playing in the nutraceutical space. Uh, we're very staunch in the fact that we take all of the drug out, we destroy it consistently, perpetually every day. We never have any type of significant volume. It's being constantly destroyed in the machine. And then we report that in. Everything's tracked with a quality system, the same as cannabis. Uh, and then the product that is used and truly the marginalized opportunity here, guys, is in our beverages and food, energy yeah. drinks, and alcoholic and alcohol spirits. That's the game here. That's the market. Everyone's tired of waiting for governments to approve regulated products, guys. Is that who you think come? Is that is that who you think will come knocking at the door eventually? Big beverage, um, or CPG, the likes of it. I've always got caught for smiling over the years when I've done podcasts and interviews. So, so yeah, I, I absolutely do think <laughs> that's ultimately what's going to happen. Yeah. We're having some really interesting conversations out of the gates, guys. Like the world is ready for this product. The fact that we've proven already that that uh, our product has an incredible sweetness of sweetening effect and a bitterness reduction effect of any caffeine related product. And of our, all of our market research in food and beverage, the, the bitterness effect of caffeine is by far the biggest gap in the food and beverage industry by using yeah, too much okay. sugar and too much sweeteners plug in our Coke extracts and we can reduce at this point, early phase, at least up to 30% sugar. So you get a, you get a very unique wow. product with the same performance, if not uh, uh, maximized performance with our Coke extract with much less sugar and a healthy product that actually helps the indigenous out 10% profit goes back to the indigenous. Yeah. That's amazing. Congrats. Uh, well, we live in a health and wellness era, do we not? So I would think brands, big brands, are going to be keen on this industry, but this has been a fascinating story. So for our viewers that want to learn more information, where can they go to find and read more? www.powerleaves.com. We're just fi finalizing our Reg D financing, uh, which is our hard close on Friday. Uh, we're excited to bring in as many investors as we can to this story as it's really exciting. And you're seeing, you're seeing constant action come out of our team and we're just going to be ramping up through the summer and then into the fall uh, with post audited financials and then prepare the company to go public next year. Anthony, this sounds like a trip to Columbia to do some filming. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, guys, this is, uh, yeah. You know, this, this sounds exciting. Let's get the path it now, it it off. Pat, this has been amazing. It. This is uh, obviously congrats on the, the reg D and uh, you know, most importantly, keep in touch, but this has been a great story. Thank you so much guys. Chad, right. Anthony, thanks. Take care. First, first, first guys. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers.
one second, Pat. So what'd you all think of the interview? Did you like what we recorded with our guests? Then leave a comment below and let us know what you thought of it. And if there's any more questions you want us to ask, as usual, share this video with your network. Click on that bell for all notifications. And most importantly, subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.